to us. Welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, we're back with a, uh, a MacBook Pro today that needs a complete overhaul on its display assembly. Um, this screen is not working at all. It's been replaced but in the past by, um, by someone who was in a bit over their head, I think. I think he bit off a bit more than he can chew and didn't realise that replacing the LCD on these MacBook Pros is, is a little bit trickier than it looks. It's certainly not impossible but there are quite a number of pitfalls that you've really got to watch out for for these. Um, first of which is, um, you know, the LCD that's itself that's fitted looks pretty ropey to me, and yeah, it's, I think it's a, it's a really crappy little thing. And of course, um, the bezel's missing entirely, so I think this was formerly a matte display model, but um, um, the customer has decided to opt for a, um, uh, for a glass replacement one, which, um, is it's cheaper repair because the parts are more readily available and in addition to that finding the replacement bezel and not sure either way we decided that we were going to be better off going for a glass fit so what I'm going to do I'm going to take this display assembly off and uh, take this LCD out fit a new one reassemble it all and hopefully we should be a-okay I'm going to need to, to do a test halfway through because of course with the display not working, there's a possibility of a damaged display cable or something like that. I really hope that's not going to be the case, otherwise we're going to spend a lot of time and money on a job that could be a bust. So, uh, so yeah, let's see how we get on. So I'm just going to blitz through removing the display assembly first and we'll go from there. What the Jeffries has happened here? That is sellotape. I'm pretty certain it's not supposed to be there. Don't recognise this bit at all. I think um, the original module is damaged here. Should be okay because this is just all wireless stuff. It shouldn't stop the thing from working, but. Either way, yes. Whoever was working on this was um, very much out of their depth, I think. Oh dear, we have a screw that's too tight. When you're up against a screw that won't budge, First things first, make sure you're using the right screwdriver. These are all double O's, but I'm just going to see if I can get any better purchase with a zero. Let's try that. No, that's not digging in. We need the sharper one. I want to apply a moderate amount of pressure, but just make sure you're dead center and applying steady and even torque. Oh, that's not budging at all. Good grief, what on earth was that done up with? There we go, easy. Whew. Phew, they're throwing that out, that's knackered. I thought I was going to have to get out the Dremel then. If we were completely stuck, I would have needed a Dremel rotary cutter and I would have needed to firstly try and cut just a flat straight line across it so I could go on with a big flat head. Failing that, I might have even needed just to grind the head off altogether and just ruin the screw. But uh, thankfully it didn't come to that. As I say, in the end, as you can see, I just got right on in there. I, w I was pressing down, not too hard, but in a controlled manner, very, very slowly applying rotational force. If you just try and go, you just strip the head off. But in that case, very slow, low speed, high torque. That's how you get a screw out. All right, as we were.
pet hairs, pet hairs everywhere. Right, so with that removed, I'm going to take this cover off, it slides to the right and then off. putting up a little bit of a fight so I'm just going to use a little bit of judicious prime. Okay, you've got to be careful on a couple of these models there are wireless modules inside this hinge assembly. Um, so just make sure you pry the plastic uh, cover over things. So if you're not careful you can actually take off antenna connectors The bit that I'm worried about is these antenna connectors here. They're quite exposed and when you're lifting this off, if it catches, it'll just tear that off. So just be a little bit careful. Alright, here's our display cable. So now we just remove these screws holding the panel in. Then when we lift the panel out, we can pull this display cable through with it. connected properly because that that should not have come off like that the uh, the connector was either not in properly or it certainly wasn't locked because that should have pulled the cable through so now I need to push that cable through manually I think I can see the locking lever actually yeah there's our locking lever that was wide open Just see if I can pull this out and straighten it out actually. There we go, that's now swiveling properly. So that will plug in, that will plug into the display, then lock in place. So it's got a new display out. You've got to be super careful with these displays because they're frameless which means there's basically not a good place to hold on to them. I'm just palming it on the back. Let's turn this over. Connect it up and then we'll see how we get on. That's going to go around that way, so let's put this like this. It's still got some covering plastic on it, so I can rest it like this. There we go. Right. That locking lever is properly over the connector now, so that's not going to come off. So now I just need to feed this back through again. It's easier to feed back through that way, but it makes it harder to connect to the display, so it's kind of six of one and half a dozen of the other. That, that didn't feel the greatest, but I think I got away with it. So, what I'm doing now, I've just got to steadily feed this through. This bottom section here is going to go under this panel, so you've just got to sort of pull and feed at the same time. 
don't bend this, whatever you do. As soon as you bend that slightly, you'll knacker the display. So, just let it all move nice and flat. Retrospectively, I should have waited before I did that because I'm not going to put on the glass quite yet because I want to test that this works. Because, of course, once I put the glass on, I'm committed. It is possible to remove the glass without breaking it, but it's not a job you want to you want to do if you can possibly avoid it. So. Okay, right, how are we going to do this? I think... We're going to have to run this the right way up. That'll do. Bluetooth can stay on plugs for now, we don't need that. And then the display cable. Let's turn this around that way, which would be the orientation of the app. There we go, that makes a bit more sense now. Power battery stone dead. One moment. Hello, how are you? Hello there. Okay, right. Brightness engage. As you can see, that's working just dandy. Just checking that this LCD is okay. No dead pixels or lines or dodgy colors or anything like that. No, that's looking fine. Cool, right, so we'll disassemble this again, get that glass panel on there, and we're reassembling. Oh, I nearly cleaned this when I was taking it apart. I wish I had now, because it's putting bloody cat hairs all over this. Right, brush. Right, one glass panel. The back part. Right, now comes the fun bit. Got to fit this before any dust settles. Oh no, I've streaked it. do before I go ahead and push that down I'll peel off the film so I can get a good look at it and just see if there are any finger marks anywhere. I have seen these things come like out of the factory with fingerprints on them just when they were being packaged or something like that so just because you've peeled the film off doesn't mean it's going to be clean underneath. Yeah, that's perfect, I'm going for that.
I love the way these things are self-adhesive. I wish iPads were this easy, I really do. I would pay good money, if you're a supplier of parts, I'd pay good money for iPad digitizers with self-adhesive glue pre-attached. Because that's the worst bit, is fitting the uh, digitizer back on afterwards. It's beautiful. Right. This fellow can go back on. And I'm just gonna professionally jiggle this thing. Don't worry if you're having trouble getting this thing back on, it's always trouble for me. Mainly because it's bloody difficult to work out how far along it should be. Here's the cheat sheet for you though. That's the gap. Those are the LCD screws. I have forgotten to fit them again, which is rather embarrassing. However, I'm not taking the glass off to fit them because I'm not, I'm not going to jeopardize that whole thing for the screws. The LCD is not going to fall out on its own. So it, might, it looks a little bit ropey not to fit those screws in, I know, but trust me, it's not going to matter. So not, under normal circumstances, make sure you remember the screws. I have forgotten them, but as you can see, it's not going to fall out. It's glued in, you know, <laughs> so no problems there. However, I do feel I am required to acknowledge that because someone who with eagle eyes has probably spotted it before I did. Anyway, let's carry on refitting. Okay, I'm going to take this and give it a quick airline. Well, bloody typical, my camera battery died while uh, recording the reassembly of this laptop. But uh, uh, I've finished putting it together now, and as you can see, it's all back in the land of the living, complete with a lovely new display that's working just fine. So, laptop needs a bit of a clean up, but uh, once that's had a nice physical wipe down and everything, that'll be good as new. So. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.